Well, hello. Today, we're going to talk about the unseen therapist, optimal EFT, and how to use it for physical things, Any, anything from injuries to diseases, physical manifestations of things. And, and I'm going to be joined here with an experienced, not only unseen therapist, -er, you know, a member of our optimal EFT course membership, um, but someone who's a practicing professional physiotherapist who sees injuries and the like with great frequency. That's Nami Osakabi. So hello, Nami. Hi, Gary. Hi, everyone. Hi. Okay. So let's talk about this for a bit. You have people come into your office primarily, not necessarily with diseases, although we're going to get to that in a little bit. Okay. But they come to you with physical injuries. Mm -hmm. And Correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not a physiotherapist myself, but I think most physiotherapists come in and they see the the injured shoulder, the injured knee, the injured whatever it may be, injured back or so on, and see that as the problem rather than as a symptom of something else. Would I be right? Yes. Okay. Well, we look at it differently. Yes, the, the client, the patient, considers that the problem because it hurts, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. It isn't working right. They don't see it as a symptom, but with your training with unseen therapists, you do see that as a symptom. And tell me if you would, how you, how that, that how, how that shifts the way you bring healing to a client. So originally we're taught in school too, like if someone's hurt there, shoulder you treat the shoulder and you bring relief by treating the shoulder but in practice i often found that that did not happen that people didn't get better as quickly as i wanted them to or they didn't get better and it became a, more of a chronic issue if you're just treating the source of pain so that's what led me to think there must be something else <laughs> and through optimal EFT and connecting with the unseen therapist, I've been able to ask her, like, what else is going on? Is it just a shoulder issue? Is it because, yeah, their posture is not great at work because they're on the computer all day and so on and so forth. And she'll say, because I have a toolbox of like physio courses and schooling, she'll go into my toolbox and say, oh, you should also check out their neck or you should also check out their wrist or their other shoulder and like help bring balance to the body in that way. So that's how she'll provide me with physical information. But then if you keep asking her and you keep practicing with the unseen therapist, she'll start to provide wisdom of like perhaps talking to the person about their shoulder injury as are you holding on to something that you desperately don't want to let go of? Like, is there something that's keeping you from moving your shoulder? Like those are the types of things. Yeah. Let me interject something. A question I might ask, although I'm not a physiotherapist, but people do come to me with injuries and I've had my own and so on. Is I was I would ask them, is it kind of a strange question to them? But a lot of them, a lot of people understand this and they can answer the question. The question is, if there was an emotional contributor to this chronic pain, what could it be? And while some of them, you know, have no idea, a lot of them will say, oh, probably my divorce or probably, you know, my, I got this when my dog died and I haven't been the same since. And you know, they will give me some emotional contributor, if not the cause that's behind that. Uh, I, uh, you may not ask that question, but I, I just want to interject that. So continue, please, Nami. I know, absolutely. I think you're very right, Gary. Some people will, if I ask them, like, if there was an emotion stuck in your shoulder, <laughs> what might that be? Some people would say, like, I don't know what you're talking about. But others who do share, that's where I'd open it up more into a conversation. But getting their history of, like, when did this start? And around that time, was anything else happening? Anything that was, like, a big trauma or anything that may have left your body not in its you know balanced state so those are also excellent questions to ask and then also bring to the unseen therapist 
Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to give a little story here. It's one I tell often, but it really points. It's the first thing, first time I understood the power of what's going on here. A young man came to me about age 19 or 20. He was a basketball player. This was decades ago when I was first starting EFT. And he had a sprained ankle. And sprained ankles typically, you know, a, a week maybe or whatever, depending on the severity of it, you're back on the basketball court and so on. But this was like three weeks later and his, his ankle was still fat, okay? It had healed hardly at all. Well, that's strange. Your doctors didn't know why. And so he comes to me and we, I, we were doing tapping at the time and tap, tap, tap and aiming at the symptom being the swollen sprained ankle. Nothing, nothing. And that's when it occurred to me for the first time to start asking about emotional, possible emotional contributors. So I started quizzing him and said, well, well, about the time that happened, was there any emotional stuff going on? Oh, yes. His girlfriend dumped him. Ooh, big thud. Ah, carried that hard. So I shifted immediately away from the symptom being the swollen ankle to the emotional cause and his emotional response to his girlfriend dumping him. We worked on that, worked on that, brought peace to that, brought peace to that. And within two or three days, he was back on the, on the basketball court. You know, the, shh, now we're having the ankle heal normally. It, it was as though that emotional trauma of the girlfriend dumping him was stuck like you said in the shoulder of your example, but stuck in his ankle. And that was a real aha for me. And since then, I've had lots of people that would write to me over time using EFT in its various forms where they were helping people with injuries. And the by using this approach, healings would happen about 50% faster than normally expected. Now, that's my little story. But <laughs> anyway, anyway, I, I interrupted you a little bit. Anything more to say on that? No, I just, I think in general, we can be so creative in asking the unseen therapist about these physical issues. If you're new to it, you really could just ask her to bring whatever relief she could in the moment. Like if you just had an injury, you're in a lot of pain, you could just ask her to bring relief. Like it could be that simple of just asking her over and over again to to practicing more with her by working on, is there something underlying this? Is there an emotion that's stuck here? Or is there a purpose or a reason that you can provide me with understanding as to like why this isn't getting better, right? So the creativity of using the unseen, unseen therapist for physical issues is I think quite varied and amazing. Another example that, that comes to mind, and you and I have talked about this before, and that's, I had a knee injury a serious knee injury. I was, my knee is supposed to bend like, like this, okay? But I was walking down this path on this rainy morning and I hit some mud and it, I don't even know how to do it here, but it bent, tried to bend the other way. And I just ripped those ligaments. I, mean, I had a football injury like that when I was age 17. At this point, I was 78 or something like that. But, but I knew what that injury was. And, and when I had that football injury at age 17, I was out for, I couldn't do, do much for three or four weeks. Okay. And now at my, my more advanced age and that pain, ooh, I thought I was going to be on crutches for like six weeks at least. That was my thought. I drug myself up to my home. Now, mind you, I, I am completely unaware of any possible emotional cause to this particular injury, okay? And maybe there wasn't. It doesn't have to be an emotional cause. I just had this injury. I drug myself up to my home. And by this point, by this time, my knee was starting to swell. It felt like I had arthritis, like I was a 300-year-old man with arthritis in the knee, okay? I mean, it was, I had to elevate elevate my knee up on my, it, the back to my couch. And I brought an unseen therapist and I got, I noticed some relief. It wasn't a big time by any means, maybe 10% relief. Well, good. Okay. 
Another hour or two later, I did it again. A little more relief. Another hour or two or later, I did it again, then again, then again, then again. And I woke up in the middle of the night and did it again. And by the time I woke up the next morning, which was less than 24 hours from my injury, that knee was completely healed. There was no trace whatsoever in my knee from that injury. There was a little tightness in my calf okay, which was a, a non-event compared to the knee, but that was it. It was gone in 24 hours. Now, that'll really get your attention. Now, I, I can't say that will happen to everybody who ever tries it, et cetera, et cetera, but that is, uh, there's no man-made technique anywhere that could do that, and so when that happens, you really get, it gets your attention big time, and you start to recognize the true power of all of this. Now, let me shift a, little, a moment if I can with you and I'll ask you another question. It's one thing to have a physical issue that is an injury. It's another to have one that's more metabolic, a, a disease, if you will, cancer, diabetes, multiple cirrhosis, and things like that. Now, I gather your clients don't come to you with, with those types of issues. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, I deal with more physical, like, injuries. Okay. But given your experience with the Unseen Therapist, and you're one of our more practiced people that really understands how to communicate with Unseen Therapists, have you ever dealt with any of those? And if you did, what would you do? I haven't personally dealt with those, but from, you know, family members, friends, or people who have these, I've asked the Unseen Therapist because – my reaction can very quickly go to, oh, that's terrible. I feel so bad for them, right? And again, through the eyes of the unseen therapist, she doesn't see anyone like that. So I have started to ask, oh, like, why would this young person come down with cancer and it's really affecting their life? They can't attend school, et cetera, et cetera. And from her eyes, she'll provide me with insight and understanding to show how how it, it can benefit them if they were to be truly open to the opportunities that are being provided for healing, right? So by asking to see through the eyes of the unseen therapist, she sees like all illnesses and disease as an opportunity to change something, to heal something, right? The opportunities provided. Yeah. And I found, I found with great frequency when I ask, uh, I get the kind of same kind of answer you're getting, but I also get something more specific. Uh, they have a, a particular guilt about something that they've never resolved. They have anger at certain people, resentments about certain people that show up in their, that, that become causes to manifest various diseases. I, um, I've talked to many doctors about that. I'm not a doctor myself. But I've yet to find a doctor that disagrees with what I'm about to say. And this is kind of a, an engineer's simplified version of medicine, but I think it's very powerful. And that is when we're having negative emotions, anger, grief, guilt, fear, and the like, every doctor will tell you that our, your system automatically creates a cascade of, my term, negative chemistry. More specifically, your adrenaline goes out of balance. Your cortisol goes out of balance. Hundreds of chemical reactions, repair type chemical reactions, your body get impaired and so on. And your immune system has got to go do something with that or you're in trouble. <laughs> okay. So until you resolve those things, your immune system is busy doing all of that stuff. And it's not a big stretch at all just to understand why it doesn't have enough resources to start taking care of other things, cancer, multiple cirrhosis, leukemia, and, and, and on and on and on goes the, goes the list. So free up the emotional system, free up the angers and the griefs and the guilts, which we're so good at with optimal EFT, you're freeing up the actual causes of these diseases that get manifested, all these ailments, you know. We see that a lot. And one thing I think our viewers should know 
is some people come to our courses and say, well, I've got a, you know, a so-and-so disease. I want that fixed. Okay. We're not really aiming at that particular disease. We can, and yes, we can get results and so on, but our major, our major aim here is at the underlying causes for not only that ailment, but everything else that's going on that's not creating peace in your system or that's robbing you of peace in your system. Get the, clear that out, which we're good at. And then the cause for all the ailments we may have now and in the future fades. And as, that, as the cause fades, ah, okay. that's me talking for a while. I don't know if you have any direct experience with that, no friends, et cetera. Uh, but if you have any thoughts, please. I think everyone can get very focused on a physical ailment because it's something that bothers them on a regular daily basis, which is why it is almost, I feel, provided because then you're getting that daily like pain or that daily you know, blood pressure reading that says something's wrong. And yeah. that is really an opportunity to really kind of push you to get at roots. If you're feeling great, there's no need to do any work. <laughs> There's no need to heal my anger because I feel fine. <laughs> yeah. Or so we think until I think something physical can really be at the forefront to say, it's time you should work on this. You should really work on this. And you get that reminder every day. So if you can sort of change your perspective on, okay, what is this trying to tell me and get at the underlying emotional issues, it can not only free you from that, say, yeah, that shoulder pain that you have, but it could also free you from, you know, the triggers that you get from your spouse or your kids at home, it could free you up as you drive in traffic, right? Like the piece that you can bring to the system is not just, not just physically based, but it could be in everyday moments as you wait in line at the airport, as you, you know, go through your workday full of chaos and stress, it's, it can be that widespread without really addressing it all specifically, or even targeting it all specifically. So and it can be specific. I'm, I'm thinking of an example here. I mean, there's people don't like to think this way. In fact, I even get criticized for even bringing it up. But people often cause their own disease. They literally want it, although they, they don't know that they want it consciously until you bring it up. I'm re remembering of a case I had years ago. My associate at the time when I first started, name was Adrian, was working with a fellow multiple cirrhosis sitting in a wheelchair. And she was working with him over the telephone, telling him how to you know, tap where we were doing tapping at the time and, and so on. And he was getting great results. I mean, he was confined to that wheelchair and he had urinary problems and numbness and his, you know, all that was starting to fade. Okay. And at one point we could hear over the, on speakerphone or over the telephone, he gets up out of his wheelchair and walks around it. And we could hear his wife in the back saying, oh, that's a miracle. So obviously he's making progress, 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 progress. Great. And so my associate Adrian gives him some, some uh, coaching on what to do with EFT and so on. And doesn't hear from him for about two or three months. He calls him up. He says, Bruce, how you doing? Oh, not so good. Well, how are your symptoms? Ah, uh, they're all coming back. Well, have you been doing the, you know, the exercises and everything? Well, no. Now that's stunning. Here's somebody obviously getting results, um, you know, clear results, and stops doing it. I got on the phone and we started talking a little bit and started asking him questions and come to find out. Very important, very important. He wants to sit in that wheelchair because, for several reasons. One, when he's in that chair, his wife, family, and other people give him attention he doesn't get otherwise. Now, this can all be collapsed because we, this all comes typically from childhood where he didn't get attention, got rejected, got abused, etc. Everybody wants love. And they'll, it is so important to get that. We'll even develop diseases to get it. That's how important it is. And we would rather sit in the wheelchair, even though that's sort of perverse thinking. 
we'd rather do that than go without the love we think we're getting because we're sitting in the wheelchair. Also, if he sits in the wheelchair, you know, he gets money from the government, disability, and he doesn't have to go to work and have all that responsibility. He doesn't have to have any response. Everybody's taking care of him. And when we talked about it, he actually admitted, yeah, yeah, I, I. He, he, he literally wanted to sit in that wheelchair, wanted his disease, et cetera. Now, that was a long time ago. If that same client was here now, I would start using unseen therapists. We're going to go back to his childhood stuff. We're going to start recognizing all that lack of love and where it came from. We're going to start generating forms of love that he can generate himself and so on. So he doesn't need to do that anymore. Okay. But all that comes from truly understanding that the disease or the injury, which is what we've talked about today, Nami, the disease or the injury is not the problem. They are symptoms of the problem. Very important to recognize. And once you recognize that, and now you realize that you not only have the power to create your disease, you also have the power to remedy it. <laughs> yeah, to heal. And that is the that is the real message here. Okay. Anyway, Nami, do you have anything else you'd like to add before we close up? That you're not a victim to your physical ailment, right? There is a power within you with the help of the unseen therapist to do so much healing, right? Yeah. It's not that these things happen to you and you're stuck with these physical issues and ailments and diseases forever, which is often the thought that as you get older, you know, it's just more, there's increased chance of getting this cancer and that disease and so on and so forth, but that's not our fate. You know, no. that's not our fate. It doesn't have to be our fate is a way to say it, I think. Yes, it doesn't have to yeah. be our fate. We have the choice. We're not victim to it. We can heal, right? We can yeah. slowly do the work to heal. Okay. Nami, Nami, my gratitude to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And to, Thank our, you, listening audience, to our listening audience next time.